Welcome back to the Raising Our Vibration podcast, where we explore higher consciousness through spiritual practice. And today, Stephen and I are very happy to welcome Amy Elizabeth to the program. Amy is an energy evolution mentor who's worked with top professional athletes, business leaders, celebrities, decorated military heroes, and really top performers in, in all areas of life. And I'll read a, a little more bio about her from her website, which is amyelizabeth.com. Amy has more than 24 years of experience working in energy medicine and as a coach. She is an IPEC certified coach, bioenergetic practitioner, and Reiki master. She has a master's degree in education and psychology. And her other certifications include, let's see, IPEC Master Energy Leadership Practitioner, Pranic Healing Practitioner, Autonomic Balancing Technique, Kinesiology, Energy Medicine, Behavioral Modification, Master Meditation and Yoga Instructor, and ordained minister of kingdom communications. So just a wonderful, diverse um, bio there and so much uh, richness that we can go into the, in this discussion. So welcome, Amy. Welcome to our podcast. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to have you here. And we'd like to start out um, as we normally do in our interviews, just having you share a little bit about your younger years, your formative years, and and any experiences you had that might have kind of set you along this path that you're um, on now, and also just did you have support for that or not, or how you navigated that in from those younger years into what you do now? Mm. Um, okay. So as a child, um, this is and this is a little bit of a interesting story. So as a child, I experienced um, many of the clairs um, in a sense of even synesthesia. And uh, as a child, my older brother was schizophrenic. So because of this, I was concerned whether I could actually share this with anyone because I was hearing voices. I was experiencing and seeing things. And then all of a sudden, you know, sound I could see. And there were like all of these very um, interesting experiences that were happening as a young child. And, um, you know, when I was maybe seven or eight, my mother used to channel White Eagle uh, with a group in our living room. <laughs> and it's funny because I never thought and didn't, maybe I just didn't feel safe enough, but I never thought to actually share what I was experiencing while they were going through this process. And, and I don't know why, because I definitely believe my mother would have been supportive of that. But there was still this little thought inside of my head that you're strange, you're weird, and no one's going to accept you. Mm. And so I grew up in the Northeast. And in the Northeast, people are very highly educated, and that's a very important thing. And they're pretty um, uh, at least the way that I grew up and in the in the place that I grew up, it was a pretty um, rigid. Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, there wasn't much expanse in or opportunity for expanse in consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that was challenging. And so there was a number of challenges as I grew up and at the age of 17 um, and experiencing depression because of this feeling of separation and this feeling of being different and this feeling of, you know, challenge and not knowing anybody like me, uh, I decided to try to take my life. And so in that process and turn in and actually transitioning into um, and having a, a moment with God and going into my near death experience, I uh, coming back, didn't actually feel supported. And it's interesting, I've, I've 
done a number of interviews around this. And it's funny because more often than not, people who have had a near-death experience come back and they're like elated and they're like, oh, I'm alive again and this is wonderful. And I thought, mm. oh shit, excuse my language. Um, why am I here? Like, I, I, you know, I was just experiencing this peace. I felt connected again. I felt home. I felt like I was in alignment with where I really want to be mm. and in my joy and a part of the oneness and being taken out of that was a very difficult experience mm. and in that space was where i started to really seek and that's when teachers started to come onto my path um, and i believe that that experience was the catapult for me to actually say okay you do have gifts and it's time to use them so that was at the age of 17 where you mm -hmm. kind of yeah. said, okay, it's time for me to really um, commit to this and go into it and, and be it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's where uh, my first Reiki master teacher came into my life. And that's where I then became a Reiki master. And from there, I started, you know, the path of just seeking whatever I possibly could about energy, about um well, I loved yoga um, and I loved the way that it made me feel mainly because it was, you know, an expression of anything that was stuck in my body and I was releasing it with the breath and releasing it through movement. So any of that anxiety that I felt about separation from others was able to be released. Mm. And so through that, I found meditation. And then through meditation, I started finding Tantra and other forms of energy medicine. Hmm. Interesting. And, and yeah. about what, what year um, did you become a Reiki master? Just curious. Um, well, I studied Reiki from 17 to 19. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess whenever that, I don't know what year that was, but, um, mm. You know, if you ask me about spatial orientation, I have no idea. And if you ask me about mm -hmm. years, I have no idea. So mm -hmm. I graduated high school, what? So 1997. So mm -hmm. I guess 1999, mm -hmm. okay. probably more like 1998, 1999. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot yeah. of, a lot of people really came to Reiki in those 94 to 99. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. Stephen and I also in that time frame. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I'll never forget my, my Reiki instructor. She was amazing. She looked like Snow White and she was like very pale and had this beautiful, long black hair. And when I, um, when I drove up to her house, she had, I don't know, 50 to 70 crows all over the roof of her house. And I was like, oh, this is going to be an experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was pretty cool. You know, and I, I, she was also someone who really taught me to uh, pay attention to nature and pay attention to animals and pay attention to signs in that way. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that I always did, but I didn't have anyone to say and give me permission and say, you know, that's okay. And that makes sense. And do you have any um, experiences from your Reiki initiations or anything from that time period that um you can remember. you know with i mean it it wasn't it wasn't as profound for me to be quite honest you know mm -hmm. working with symbols and working with the energy and the initiation of it i felt it was really natural mm -hmm. um it wasn't until later where i started to really work with tantra and moving energy through my body and, and the energy channels and you know, into my twenties, really, you know, when I would say when I was about 23, I into 26, there was a lot of uh, focus on moving energy and understanding how to reach um, elated states of bliss, you know, from that and heal myself through that um, verse uh, channeling Reiki, because I wasn't using it really to heal other people. I was using it to heal myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think the kind of person I am, you know, I like um, a pretty intense experience. And so, you know, I kind of went for the big boom versus the sweet, soft, you know, and that's how I experience Reiki is it's a very mm -hmm. gentle, refined, beautiful channel and flow of energy versus, 
you know, really working that up and down your channels and in your chakra system and, um, you know, sensing into blockages and, and finding the edges and things of that nature. So you can you um, describe to us how your personal practice kind of evolved then over, over the years to where you are now? Yeah. You know, that might be a big um, question, but any highlights? Yeah, it's a huge question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a huge question because it, it's it's evolved, you know, a ton. But, you know, when I was 17, I started to play with energy and that was really important and then investigate um, what was happening in my body and then how to work with energy to move that. And so that then began to grow with every certification or every class or every teacher. And, you know, meditation was always a part of my practice. Yoga has always, asana has always been a part of my practice. Um, and that then evolved into uh, really looking at the polarities and the duality of life. Um, and that then evolved into reaching the higher states of elation through meditation and, you know, and working with other um, modalities as well to, to get to those states of clarity and um, expressing bliss through my heart and expanse um an expansive bliss through my heart if that makes sense mm. nice amy i'm i'm very curious as you talk you know because both both you and i know even astrologically you have an incredible amount of fire so that you have you know as you were mentioning perhaps the soft approach is one aspect of you but you really tend towards the you know that power approach you have a lot of a lot of fire energy so i'm curious if a client comes to you how do they experience that you know i know you use any enneagram and i use uh energy evolution could you describe a little bit of the kind of process you take people through so that people who are listening might get a practical feeling of what happens when i come and sit with amy elizabeth how does that kind of evolve what what's going to happen to me when I'm sitting in front of the fire princess <laughs> you know that kind of <laughs> that kind of feeling I don't think anyone's ever called me the fire princess but that's <laughs> thank you <laughs> and you know and it's interesting that you say that though right because um transmutation is a huge part of an alchemy is a huge part of the work that I do through um, different forms. And so, you know, one of my other teachers um, is somebody who is an ascended master trans channel. And so she taught me about the violet flame. And so I do use um, that channeling to work with people and for the clarity, you know, calling in the ascended masters, calling in my guides and my angels so that they're with me and helping a client to really understand, feel, notice, and develop a relationship with their support team, you know, whether it's in the physical in the third dimension or if it's in the fifth dimension. And so working with me is a process and I typically don't take anybody, you know, under a year because it's not something that is a, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, we're done. It really is an evolutionary process where we peel back the layers and we look and we, you know, use whatever is sometimes polarizing and sometimes um, challenging for um, fodder and food for growth. Um, and that tension or that challenge is really sometimes where the, the root of creativity stems. And so that's a huge part of my process. Um, you know, and it depends on who's coming to me for which, you know, and in, in, in the past, I've worked with many high achievers who are optimizing their potential. And that might look like, you know, somebody who wants to be in the Super Bowl, right? And they're an NFL player. And so I'll use chronic healing to optimize the chakra system to help them to run faster, to cleanse their field, to help them to, you know, um, to... Mm, well, to, let me say this, it's, it's 
a little secret sauce around working with the chakra system and working with a color coding system to help them jump higher, to help them become more sticky on the ground, to help them emanate that sort of superhero that they'd like to emanate and all the characteristics that that person embodies, right? Um, when it's in a company or it's a CEO in a business, um, you know, whether it's a single person or it's literally the company, I look at everything as an entity. And so I look to find the energy leaks and plug those leaks. And then from those leaks, we look at the patterns and themes and we begin to work with those patterns and themes, sometimes through energy medicine and sometimes through um, coaching. And sometimes through some other different um, work that that I like to use in terms of working with polarity, which I think is a, a very important tool right now for us to really be in the state of awareness and be pulling from awareness and understanding that we are that anything that feels like a challenge, like I was saying earlier, is actually um, you know if we're if we're going to reject it or push it away, it's actually very detrimental to our growth because it's basically saying we're separate than it. And then that's our ego coming in to have an even bigger fight with us so that we can't really necessarily pull from the whole. And our wholeness is dark and light, not just light. You know, I, I a very curious thing happened when you were uh speaking and you hesitated about the secret source and when you said secret source this violet flame burst above my room it was very uh, I've, I haven't seen that uh necessarily happen in synchrony with somebody speaking like this so I want to ask you a little bit about so obviously the secret source is quite quite important and I don't necessarily want you to reveal your secret source but I am curious for listeners and and watchers about the the overall process what you've described uh, a year because this is uh, something that Kev and I have kind of given attention to many times and that is it is actually quite crucial both for your process and the process we take people through that they keep at it and so what I'm curious uh, about you maybe help helping head people towards let's say you've got somebody out there who doesn't have very strong willpower which I know is very different mm. from perhaps your natural state and they don't actually think they're going to last an entire year or they don't even know where to look and they've changed and they've gone from one thing to another you know they tried this course and that course and this course mm -hmm. how do how do you how, how, what sort of tips would you give people listening for to help them on their path to help them stick to their path and and to mm -hmm. know how to find the right you know, they come to you, there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's perhaps, you know, a few people out there who do the type of work you do. How do they choose, you know, how do they choose? And then how do they stick at it? How do they actually mm -hmm. stay on their path? And how, perhaps how do you help people over, say, a year really stick to, you know, is it, a, is it setting goals? Is it, is it lots of intention setting? How do you help them clarify what it is that they really need to be doing or being you know in their path mm. well i love um that you said clarify <laughs> because that is definitely um the expression of my soul is clarity and it's a really important thing and i think that part of it is just an activation and initiation when you know you're with somebody who is extremely clear about who they are then you can be extremely clear about who somebody isn't you know, and then when you, for me, I, I work with somebody, I take on their energy field, I get permission, obviously, I take on their energy field, and then I can kind of dance in their energy and start to get to know what is them and what is a bright, shiny object, if that's how I'm understanding you, Stephen, is these different bright, shiny objects that come in that are distractors, whether they're relationships or they're new courses or they're a new business idea or they're whatever the case is. And so um, we do make agreements on the goal setting path. Uh, I try to stay away from the word goal and more so intention. And, you know, right when I um, work with a client, but you know, the first session when we've signed on for our, our year long is we, we go through a assessment 
And I um, tend to work with, interestingly enough, a number of analytical kind of people who really want some kind of proven method. And so uh, I go through something called the Energy Leadership Index Assessment, which really shows you your default setting versus your um, optimal performance and then everything in between and all of those uh, possibilities, developing um, possibilities and opportunities up to that um, optimum state and where they want to reside and stay, if you will. Um, but also the advantages and disadvantages so that they're very clear. And so we go through a process where you understand, you know, who you are and who you're not. And when you understand who you are and who you're not, and you really on a cellular level, take that on and you can conceptualize it. And there's something that happens to people when they see bar graphs and they see statistics and they see percentages, there's a believability factor for them. And so when we're designing their individual energy plan or their soul's map and where their soul's um, moving towards, I can start to narrow and narrow and narrow the path that I'm Sherpaing them on by continuing to use these tools to show them for their believability factor. And more often than not, that bright, shiny object syndrome that they may have can be you know, one of the patterns and themes of, I don't complete things, you know? And so if that's the case, we discover that in the beginning and I call out those patterns and themes in the beginning so that when that happens in three months or six months, we can go back to remember this is that, that thing that's showing up. Does that make sense? I hope that's answering your question, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, be beautifully, beautifully so. And, and again, again, I'm, just curious about what let's let's say somebody's very new on the path and they they want to have a little access to Amy Elizabeth's signature energy practices and something that you might be able to offer people that you know a simple piece of advice something that would help either ground mm -hmm. them or clarify mm -hmm. things what 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 mm -hmm. sort of practical tips could you offer people now, now I mean that might might just somebody listening might think oh my goodness I've never thought of mm -hmm. that or wow that's so yeah. simple yeah yeah there's a number of um uh, free things on my website by the way you know I mean I have meditations on my website I have meditations on iTunes and on Spotify and um you know a few other things that assist a human in knowing thyself but my very favorite tool, which is super simple, <laughs> is just taking a piece of paper, drawing a line down the center, and on the left side, writing, when I feel blank, I can. And then on the right side, you'll say, when I stop feeling blank, I can. So let me go through an example of what this looks like. So when I feel frustrated, and again, you're always going to use the negative energy signature okay even though it sounds funny we're working with the subconscious mind so it's really important to stay with the negative energy signature i was working with somebody this morning and we were using distrust and so it kind of sounds funny when you're doing the right side of the column but it's important because it 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 works it works every time um so when i feel frustrated i can and then you list all the things so when i feel frustrated if that's your like signature pattern that seems to come up for you consistently um and distracts you off the path of getting something done or accomplishing a task or you know even just feeling grounded and rooted and centered in yourself so when i feel frustrated i can um i can pay attention to things that don't really matter i can be distracted i can be unhappy i can push people away i can get angry i can whatever the case is right and those are some examples on the right hand side when i stop being frustrated or feeling frustrated i can i can uh, go out and meet new friends i can create a community i can um, accomplish the task that I set out to. I can be healthy. I can be happy. I can be expansive. I can be peaceful, whatever it is. Right. And so the more that we understand what we are experiencing outside and just like getting it out, you know, versus, um, having the, um, I'm not supposed to be this way. 
And I feel that that's a big challenge for a lot of people um, more often than not, that they don't really, there's a tension between the feeling and the not wanting to feel that way. And so when we just express the fact that like, I want to be frustrated, you know, and, and make it funny, you know, that actually just press, that's just like pressing the, the button of the pressure bell and it releases it from you. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, I, I feel so much better, right? And so then claiming when you stop being this, rather than saying I am, you know, peaceful or whatever, you know, because the body doesn't really believe that. I mean, it's still in the frustration, you know, I mean, you're just, you know, you're, you're bridging the gap. And then if you want to take it one step further, you can, but I don't recommend that. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. I love the fact that you say, you know, when I feel blank, yeah. because it's so mm -hmm. important to, for people to acknowledge the feeling and that it's actually okay. And that also you can really see clearly the results of what happens when you feel that. Because I think what happens is that people dissociate the, the feeling from the actions and then they mm -hmm. all, it, and then there's not, there's just like, I feel frustrated, but all these bad things happen to me with no connection right. between the two. So yeah, that's very, that's right. very clever. That's very, that's mm -hmm. a good, really great angle on helping people to see insight uh, or help people, people to see with insight through, through really powerful feelings. Cause I, I agree with you, you know, the feeling we tend to push away lots and lots of feelings that in fact could be very wisdom liberating feelings for us when we mm -hmm. see them. So that's a great little exercise. I love that. Um, to tell, to tell everybody a little bit about some of the projects that you're engaged in or some of the things because I know that you've got books coming up you've got involved in an enormous number of programs and also in guidance the mm -hmm. kinds of guidance that you do so anything that you'd like to share about some of the programs how they're evolving uh you know even if you want to let us into the secret of the book and <laughs> anything that might be coming please please do share on any level anything that you'd like to well, I want to touch on something, you know, Kevin was bringing up about um, my childhood and that you guys have asked about childhood with previous um, people. And I feel one of the things is I really did feel alone and I definitely didn't have support. And, um, you know, for instance, and I'm just going to skip over this quickly, but with near-death experience, you know, there is a medicine now that can really help people to get through that, which is called find a Neo DMT. Um, because it's a similar experience of being able to like move through that experience um, and 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 transition into you know the third dimension, the fifth dimension, and what that feels like, or whatever dimension you want to call <laughs> the all knowing, right? Um, oneness, we'll say that. I'm not going to call it the fifth dimension because I don't believe that that's what it is. But anyway, on you know, and and I digress by saying that because um, one of the things that I that we have is a mentorship program. Um, and it really is for people who have special abilities and have healing capabilities and they really want to get out there, but they have no idea how to, um, you know, work a business. They don't understand about contracts. They don't understand about all those things. And so we call it the energy evolution system and it's there to support you so that you can show up and shine. And, you know, we're always accepting other mentors, uh, which are my mentees, and I then mentor you. So you have support all around. And so whatever that might look like, you know, please reach out to us. And if you're interested in any way, shape or form, we'd love to talk to you. If you're really, you know, feeling that you're gifted, and you have something to share with the world, and you are here to help ascension and evolution, then like, let's get you out there and we're here to help you. Um, and so so that's one of the things, and, um, and I'm really excited about that. Um, and so we've created an, a whole educate, uh, excuse me, we've created a whole educational platform around that, and we're creating an online school. So that's another great opportunity for people to learn about all these different modalities, whether it's hypnosis, or it's bioenergetics, or it's shamanism, or it's, you know, astrology, or it's, you know, 
the cards of magi, all of these different technologies that you can use to know thyself. And so that's another really exciting thing that we've got going on that's coming out. Um, we're just in uh, the application process for that. And um, what else? Um, I, uh, a project that I'm working on that I'm really excited about and I, I love <laughs> is, um, so I created these Oracle cards, which are polarity Oracle cards. And I channeled these pictures and I have to say it was a really um, awesome and difficult process. And so, you know, whenever, whenever anything is difficult, it's typically something that's, you know, amazing. <laughs> that's what I'll, I'll just say that, you know, cause I, I, you know, the hardest things are the best things, right? They sharpen the sword the most. And so through that process, I'm creating, um, 24 meditations to assist the lower vibratory energy signature, which is the emotion or the feeling to transmute it and transcend it into the higher um, vibration. So for instance, if you're experiencing fear and you're somebody who experiences fear frequently, you can turn on this six minute meditation and start to become a window that's open and fear gets to be the wind. And so this meditation teaches you how to be with and feel embody what fear feels like and then transmute it and transcend it to its highest form which would be excitement right because it's the same energy it's the same frequency it's the same vibration it's just that we like want to reject it we want to push it away it doesn't feel comfortable but when we start to breathe with it and we learn how to work with it we can transmute it so much faster. So as we continue to practice this, it becomes, you know, just easy, like breathing air, you know? And so this is true for, um, you know, sadness and joy and, you know, all of these different um, polarities. And so I'm really excited about that. And with that is um, a book that is all about what this process does how it helps you to optimize your energy and to evolve into ascension if that's what you're about i know for me i'm you know since i was uh since i knew what ascension was you know in terms of my near death experience that's i've been craving that ever since that same state and getting to that state and so um that state of peace and bliss and oneness uh you know, I want to give that to people without them having to go through the, the process that I went through. So. Beautiful. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, Stephen and I always like to encourage people is to have something they do first thing in the morning and something they do last thing at night. Um, do you have any tips or any suggestions for people in terms of how to wake up and how to um, go to sleep. So I have so many, I'm mm -hmm. just going to pick a couple. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one is very obvious. And I think it's also one of the most profound. And um, I love to have a journal and write five and write five things I'm grateful for in the morning. And in that process, I typically have a cup of what I call yin yang water, which is a little slice of lemon with hot and then half hot and then cold water. Um, and I pray into that water, all of the things that I'd like to experience in the day, whether it's like just expanse and openness and peace in my body and, you know, all of the, the, the goodness. Um, and then I like to write down in the journal um, something I, I write at the top, what was great about today? And as if I'm reading it from, you know, the evening, I literally write down everything, whether it be something as like, I received this amount of money or this kind of state of being all day long, or um, I met this person or um, the meetings went well or whatever it is, right? 
and nine times out of 10, everything on that list happens. And so it's just a practice of mine in the morning. And then in the evening, I think it's really important to celebrate self and also to write down five things that you acknowledge yourself for. And so um, I love to look at what happened during the day and how I was. And it doesn't necessarily mean like, you know, I acknowledge myself for being the best coach or something like that. It's it's more like I acknowledge that I recognize this pattern and I didn't step into the booby trap, you know, or I acknowledge that um, I uh, have a lot of power. You know, I acknowledge that I craved something and I didn't give it to myself, you know, but it's, it's, it's like a level of awareness. And then I celebrate myself and give myself a level of positivity. And I think that it's a really important thing for us to get on the celebration train because it's so easy to think we have to clear this. We didn't do this. We're not good at this. And it's very easy to fall into that polarity or that side. So before you go into dream time, whatever it looks like celebrating yourself. And so, you know, sometimes people want to like dance around for five minutes. Sometimes people want to give themselves a little self massage. Sometimes people want to, I don't know, snuggle with their pet or their kids or their, you know, partner, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. And then do you review what you wrote in the morning, in the evening? Yeah. I love it. I think it's hysterical. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, and, and, and clients say it too. They're like, Oh, I forgot to do that. And then they start doing it for weeks at a time. And all of a sudden it's like their revenue is going up. Their team is act like their, you know, the leadership team is, is enhanced and they're doing what they're meant to do. And there's not a lot of like performance issues. And yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable when we just intentionalize and then we remember that we actually are the creators of our own destiny. Beautiful. Yeah. That. And anything else you'd like to leave people with before we sign off? Um, I guess I would just say I would love if you guys are interested in in the work, then you know, sign up on the website. Um, please. And uh, we have a lot coming out and there's a lot of freebies that we give to people for uh, their highest and best um, so that they can explore who they are in this experience, in this incarnation, in this lifetime. And um, I'm here to help. And um, I would definitely recommend if anyone's interested in hearing a short meditation, there's one on iTunes or Spotify called The Awakening Prayer. And that was channeled by Lori Toy, who's a teacher of mine. Um, and it was um, given by Saint Germain. And it's a very powerful awakening prayer. And I mm. highly recommend it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. I oh, know Stephen and I want to thank you so much for being here on the podcast. It's just really inspiring to listen to you and uh, hope it's been inspiring to all of you listening. Please visit amyelizabeth.com for more information and for more information on meditation and awareness practices, subtle energy meditation, you can visit Stephen and I at raisingourvibration.net. So thank you, Amy. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you both. Blessings. Very grateful. Bye for now.